In this video, we want to consider further some of the formal properties of uh, orthogonal matrices. Remember, the uh, playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Now, this diagram is from video number 27. What we were considering there is we had, of course, an x and y axis and a vector small vector r comprised of points x and y and then at each point x y we generated a new set of points x prime y prime using these equations so by using these relationships we can take any x y point here and generate a new x prime y prime point and the whole collection of them comprises this vector, R, capital R actually. And notice that the magnitude of capital R is going to be larger than this because any point on it, x prime, y prime, is going to be larger than the corresponding x, y on uh, small r. So that we discussed in, in video number 27. And these equations here we could write in a matrix form. Then, in that same video, video number 27, we also noted that these same equations can be interpreted in a different way. Instead of thinking of taking points x and y and making new points x prime and y prime that can be used to derive a, a new vector, instead we could think of this as the equation of a line and this as the equation of another line. So then what we'd have is our small vector r, the x, y coordinate system, and then the x prime and the y prime lines could actually form, if we, if we interpret these as lines now, then these could form a different axis for the system. And that we had in this diagram, again from video number 27. Here's the vector, small r. Here's the xy coordinate system. And then for x prime and y prime, we might get line segments or a new axis where this might be x prime and this might be y prime. So these equations here can be interpreted two ways. Number one, as taking a vector r and transforming it into a new vector r in a single coordinate system or having small vector r with a double coordinate system x and y and then taking these as the equations of a new axis as we have in this diagram. So the same set of equations could be interpreted in two different ways. Now we noted in a video uh, number 27 is that x prime and y prime in general are not perpendicular. However, if we have this situation, same setup, except now when we form the new vector capital R, we require that it has the same magnitude as small r. Then in that situation, if we take our same matrix equations that transforms x, y into x prime, y prime, like this, this would be matrix A. So for each x, y on small r, we can generate a new x prime y prime on a different line capital R but now we're doing it so that this vector has the same magnitude as this vector now if instead we reinterpret the equations as x prime y prime as being lines that is a new set of axes well if this preserves the length of the vector 
here in our original interpretation, if matrix A does that, then when we think of it in terms of an X prime Y prime system, what we showed in video number 27 is that these now must be orthogonal. If in our two vector interpretation, we require that their lengths or their magnitude be the same. And again, that's what we discussed at length in video number 27. Then in the last video, we said, well, um, the formal definition of an orthogonal matrix, beyond what we discussed in video number 27, is that we have this. A, an orthogonal matrix, if you take its transform, it's also the inverse of the matrix. So that A or And again, we discussed this in the last video, number 28. But now, here's the question. In video number 27, we said, well, an orthogonal matrix preserves the magnitude of the vector from small r to big R. What does that have to do with our formal definition of an orthogonal matrix that we discussed in the previous video? So. That's what we want to examine in this video and try and get that cleared up. So what we're going to do then is say that, okay, here is matrix A. It transforms X prime into Y prime. But now we want to have it such that X squared plus Y squared equals X prime squared plus Y prime squared. In other words, that these are going to have equal magnitude. So let's do that and see where it leads us. We're saying for matrix A, we want to have it so that x prime squared plus y prime squared equals x squared plus y squared. Well, x prime squared is this, so we have ax plus BY squared plus Y prime squared that has to equal X squared plus Y squared. That's our, <clears throat> this is the condition here for our matrix. So let's see where this takes us. Here we have a squared, x squared, plus b squared, y squared, and plus the cross term, plus a, b, times xy, then here we have plus c squared x squared plus d squared y squared plus the cross term cd times xy. We want that to equal x squared plus y squared. And it looks like we can collect some terms here. For x squared, we have a squared plus c squared plus for y squared, we have b squared plus d squared Plus, for xy term, we have ab plus cd. And that has the, oops, this is times xy. 
and that has to equal x squared plus y squared. Now for this to be true, obviously, this has to be 1, this has to be 1, and this has to be 0. But these are exactly the equations that we derived in the last video, video number 28. For matrix A, in our 2 by 2 example, in order for A transpose A to equal the identity matrix I, what we discovered is that the columns of A had to be orthonormal. And that's what these equations are showing us a squared plus c squared is 1. It's a unit vector. For this column, vector BD, its magnitude is 1. That's another unit vector. And this is the dot product of these two column vectors, that 0. So what we're saying here, looking at coming at it from this point of view, is that if we have a matrix that transforms one vector into another vector but preserves the magnitude of the vector as we required right here then we see that the columns of the vector must be orthonormal and as we demonstrated in the previous video this These are the formal definition of a uh, orthogonal matrix. Essentially, the matrix is transpose, its transpose is the inverse of the matrix. And what we showed um, from, I believe it was this relationship, is that the columns of an orthogonal matrix are orthonormal. And when we consider preserving the length of the vector that we're transforming, we're seeing that the columns of our matrix must be orthonormal. So that's sort of how it all ties together. Um, what we haven't answered yet is what would be what would have to be the components of a matrix, specifically what would have to be the components, so that when you went from a, point, a system of points x, y to a system of points x prime, y prime, preserving the magnitude, what would have to be the exact components of that matrix? Or instead, if we interpreted this as x prime and y prime being two different lines that form a new axis, and as we proved in video number 27, x prime and y prime have to be perpendicular to each other, then exactly what would be these components A, B, C, D of our orthogonal matrix A? That is what we will answer in the next video. So come back, join us for that video, and we'll continue our discussion here of um, orthogonal matrices.